Uh, first off, thank you to the OpenMDO team and NASA for having us here this week. I apologize for the technical difficulties. We tried that out this morning and it worked fine. Uh, something about the last two hours meant that the presentation stopped working. We tried Aton's computer, that didn't work either, but hopefully this will work. Uh, I just checked in the animations that I have in here, unfortunately, are no longer working. So if you want to see some of those after the presentation, I'm happy to show you uh, within the slides. But uh, I'll go ahead and get started. Um, I'm a fifth year PhD student at the University of Michigan. I work with Professor Martins uh, and Professor Karthik Durasami, who's not here this week. Um, and I work on aeroacoustic optimization and trying to integrate noise uh, optimization within uh, an OpenMDO framework. So the title of my talk is Towards Efficient Aerostructural Acoustic Optimization for Urban Air Mobility uh, Vehicle Design. So I'll start off by defining uh, an important term here, which is UAM, or urban air mobility. Uh, and it is a new type of transportation that takes advantage of the air above us to try to move people around cities and avoid congestion that you might get in a, a traffic jam, for example. And this is coming about now and in the last decade because of mostly two factors, and it's facilitated by distributed electrical propulsion uh, and autonomous technologies that are reaching maturity, and we can now implement them in uh, vehicles that hopefully we'll see within the next decade flying above us. To give some context on where the industry is with this, um, these are six of what I would deem the, the big players in UAM. Uh, two of the big ones are Joby and Archer. Uh, we worked directly with Hyundai for a few years, so I have them included on this slide, uh, and Volocopter Whisk and Beta are some other advanced concepts. And what you'll notice here is there's a lot of open rotors. So open rotors is something that we saw uh, back in the last century and is now becoming of fashion again, um, moving away from, for example, jet aircraft for short flights. And that is an important acoustic problem because you have this exposed blade that's spinning very quickly. So back in 2019, there was a nice paper from uh, mostly NASA Langley and Ames, I believe, and it outlined these 10 areas of technological development that we needed to work on for UAM to become a reality. And they range from ease of certification to affordability and safety, and then two of the ones that were deemed critical are community noise and vehicle efficiency. Uh, and of course, vehicle efficiency is something very important in the MDO lab and to open MDIO, um, but I wanted to look at the, the community noise side of it because if we don't satisfy the communities that we need to operate in, these vehicles will never actually operate within cities because they'll be deemed uh, too loud. So we use open MDO in our workflow at the MDO lab, but how can we actually implement aeroacoustics to solve this noise problem within our framework? So what does a normal vehicle design process look like? So I'm speaking here in, in general terms. You start out with some preliminary design. Inside of that, you'll iterate with some weight and loading estimation, some geometric sizing, uh, some low fidelity simulation analysis, and this has changed a lot with UIM vehicles because they break the mold of some of the empirical models we've had in the past. You might then move to a refined design phase that has some aerodynamic analysis, structural analysis, mission analysis. You might start developing a power plant, like an electric motor. Perhaps you're looking at the interior and how you need to manage your uh, battery configuration and so on. And then you have a vehicle testing phase, as a lot of these companies have reached. Uh, and you might have some flight testing, you're looking at performance, um, some regulatory approval, and inside of that is typically where you would see aeroacoustic analysis to sort of quantify how loud this vehicle is. We're interested in adding acoustics to the preliminary and refined design phase because we don't want to accidentally come up with a vehicle that maybe is ultra efficient and comfortable for a passenger, but extremely noisy and won't be allowed to fly over the communities it's intended to service. So to step back to the kind of work that we do in the MDO lab, and this was touched on in the previous presentations, um, but a typical problem, for example, when the lab was founded is an aerostructural problem. So here we have a truss braced wing example vehicle, and you have some design variables such as wingspan or airfoil shapes, and you have your structural sizing design variables. And from that, you can compute a fuel burn or structural stresses to try to come up with this optimized, mostly vehicle shape and structural design. Um, so we have some objective, f of x that we want to minimize. Of course, it's familiar to everyone in this room, based on some constraints, or within some constraints and, and some design variables. And just to recap what we do in the lab specifically, we have projects on electropropulsive design optimization that Aton just touched on, um, aerodynamic optimization with packaging constraints, some aeropropulsive optimization that Anil spoke about, uh, trajectory optimization was touched on in the past, and aerothermal shape optimization that Josh, who is here, uh, works on. 
why do I specifically care about MDO for this application? There was a nice paper by Ben Brelge, who was mentioned in the previous presentation, and it talks about how interconnected all of the subsystems within electric vertical takeoff and landing vehicles that are becoming UAM vehicles are. And it's very important to take into account different subsystems when you're trying to optimize a vehicle as a whole, because you might not make any progress if you're doing, for example, a serial design and optimization of each component, because it's a highly coupled system. Now, again, I don't think I need to motivate this specifically to this crowd, but of course we want to use gradients because gradient-free methods scale terribly. So we might take a lifetime to try to come up with a optimized design, whereas with gradient-based methods, we can try to get to that solution quite a bit faster, especially as our problem size gets larger. So in an ideal world, this is what our aerodynamic and aeroacoustic would look like if we ignore structures for now. Aeroacoustics is fully dependent on aerodynamic data. So you would take in um, or you would have your optimizers that would be wrapped around a solver, that solver being for an aerodynamic analysis. And once that's converged, whether it's CFD, VLM, or something lower fidelity like blade element theory, you would then pass that aerodynamic information into an aeroacoustic solver. From that, you can compute your functions of interest, for example, how much noise is hitting an observer on the ground, or how efficient your vehicle is, and you can iterate on that and do this coupled aerodynamic and aeroacoustic uh, optimization. So this is a, the most basic version that we could come up with. So to be able to implement that, we first need to come up with a noise model. So how do we predict UAM vehicle noise within OpenMDAO? I'll separate this out into two separate sources of noise. And I'm going into the, the weeds of acoustics because it motivates the challenge behind this problem. We have two sides. We have tonal noise. So that's what you hear when a helicopter's overhead. You hear the periodic wop-wop, whether in front of the helicopter or underneath it it's uh, repeated. So you can predict that because it has a certain tonality and it's repeated over time. Broadband noise is much more challenging to predict and that's something that you have coming from vortex shedding or vortex noise on the tip of a blade or you have some turbulence in a boundary layer uh, and that is not periodic. That's more of a the fuzz noise that you would hear that's often higher frequency when you have a helicopter overhead. So to dive into the tonal noise sources specifically. This is a Michigan helicopter. Um, I see the text there got a little bit messed up. I apologize for that. Um, we have this thickness and high-speed impulsive noise. Again, repeated. This moves out in planes. So when there's a helicopter way uh, far away from you, for example, down the road, you'd see, you, you would hear this noise hitting you and its physical geometry pushing air towards you. There's also blade vortex interaction noise where you get peaks of noise that emanate out uh, diagonally, and then there's this loading and broadband noise that moves directly down towards you. And to think of that intuitively, that is quite literally air getting pushed towards you standing underneath the helicopter. And that's what leads to these small fluctuations that lead to noise. On the broadband noise side, it's much harder to predict. So we have empirical methods. The PEG model is a very simple empirical method that's specifically for helicopters with a single tail rotor. For UAM, we can essentially throw this model out because it doesn't match any of the vehicle configurations that we're looking at. So instead, we use the Brooks Pope Marcolini model called Brooks here that looks at some self noise from an airfoil where you have perhaps some separation, the uh, tip vortex, for example, that I mentioned before, and it quantifies all these in a semi empirical way. And we can implement that for each one of our rotors and propagate that noise outwards to predict our noise. For computational error acoustics to go over the actual implementation, it's an unsteady problem. And the most basic way, though extremely expensive, to get acoustics is to run DNS. So you can run an unsteady DNS simulation and propagate your noise outwards through your grid, but obviously this is extremely expensive. Other ways of doing it include integral-based formulations that require integrals over time from, for example, a rotor, a rotor spinning in space. So this is something like Lighthill's analogy, uh, a Kirchhoff method, or what's commonly used, which is the Fox, Williams, and Hawking's model. And this distills your aerodynamic data into a way that you can then project that to propagate acoustics outwards to an observer of interest. So to recap, the first two methods here are far too expensive to even run for a single analysis, not to mention run with an optimization because you would be running one iteration every few months. So that would be infeasible. The Kirchhoff method, unfortunately, is not accurate for rotorcraft applications. We can toss that one out, even though it is computationally efficient. Uh, 
Uh, and finally, Fox Williams Hawking has been shown to work very well for router applications. So we've implemented that with an open MDO. And we are not the only ones. I'm looking specifically at Dan sitting over there, uh, who has implemented his own version of this as well in Julia. To go into the details of this model, this shows again where our uh, unsteady problem comes from. So we have the, a quadruple noise source, a dipole, and a monopole source. And this goes back to that helicopter image I showed before where you have noise emanating outwards. So your monopole noise is the one that's emanating in plane from a single pole. Dipole is up and down, and then quadrupole is the diagonal uh, noise. And that fortunately is largely from shocks. Now from UAM vehicles, we're not looking at that. So we can go ahead and ignore the quadruple term, which simplifies our expression quite a bit. And from there, we can rearrange this into what's called Ferriset Formulation 1A. That allows you to compute these pressure perturbations at a location uh, in space, and you can analyze how much noise a vehicle is generating. Now, again, this is all for tonal noise that is periodic. So this works well for helicopters, for example. And we combine this all into a metric that we will use inside of our optimizer that is a single scalar value that is sound pressure level, which is a, a log-based scale to get a decibel value. This is an animation I wish were working. Um, this, is, this shows that it is a, a time accurate problem. What you would see is those contours below the vehicle would uh, oscillate quite a bit as the propellers there are spinning. And the, the noise that you hear as an observer is that wave of pressure that is oscillating up and down. So what we need to do to compute acoustics is we need to compute that unsteady pressure perturbation and from that get a value of noise. We need a very efficient way of modeling the aerodynamic side to be able to integrate this into OpenMJO and not have design iterations that take an extremely long time. So we use something called hybrid blade out momentum theory. This starts with momentum theory, where you forget about having a certain number of blades or a certain airfoil distribution, and you simply model the propeller as a disk in space. And from some uh, analytical derivations, we have that the propeller disk will change a certain amount of momentum, or part of a certain amount of momentum on the flow and create this uh, slipstream or stream tube. From this, we can compute a coefficient of thrust. And this must match blade element theory, where you're actually computing, using 2D airflow cross sections, the amount of force that's imparted on that flow. So you would take your airflow cross section, and from that, you can integrate around one revolution and find the thrust of a rotor around one revolution. And this must match with momentum theory. This is a quasi steady method because you're considering each time step independently, which is what it makes it so powerful for optimization because we don't have to deal with a fully unsteady adjoint. So now I'm going to use the, the A word that Justin likes to not mention, but I'm going to go briefly through deriving the adjoint for this specific application. Uh, so we have a certain number of design variables X, some state variables, and this fits into uh, our function of interest and the solution residual based off of blade momentum theory. We'd have probably around 10 design variables depending on the problem, or order 10 design variables, order 100 state variables for each time, or in total, uh, one for each time step. We have order one function of interest that are objective and constraints, and then we have order 100 uh, residual values. And we can compute, or, or we can define, our total derivative equation of uh, df with respect to dx. You can do the same with dr, the residual, with respect to dx. And we know that that residual must be converged at zero at all times, or all converged solutions. So we can set that equal to zero. And from there, you can now compute the total derivative of your states with respect to design variables. And this leads into the adjoint and the direct method uh, formulations, both of which we have implemented for our work. And we use one or the other, depending on how many design variables and how many functions of interest we have. Now, again, I've been harping on the efficiency of this method. We don't want to do any sort of unsteady adjoint. So the beauty of this method is that because it is quasi-steady, we can treat each time step independently. And this means that some of our matrices for computing the adjoint and the direct method are completely block diagonal. So this means that we can fill out these derivative matrices with one pass of our analysis function within our code. And we can use graph coloring on top of that. So it becomes a very simple problem to solve because we're flattening our unsteady problem into a steady problem. And we use uh, algorithmic differentiation and, again, graph coloring to compute these derivatives. How this looks in OpenMDO, this is the N2 diagram. Uh, it's sequential, so you have the 
aerodynamic block on top. Uh, I don't use any OpenMDAO-based solvers, so I do the solving myself. That's why you don't see any back coupling um, on the lower side diagonal. And then that all gets passed into the aeroacoustic solver, which computes your SPL or sound pressure level and functions of interest. How does this workflow for workflow perform? Uh, these are slides that I've shown before. I don't want to show quite yet the work we've done more recently in the last few months, but hopefully I'll show that soon. Um, this is a quadrotor vehicle that we presented on in the past. It's a single passenger, fully electric, uh, RPM controlled concept vehicle designed by NASA. And we studied the aerodynamic and aeroacoustic performances vehicle. So on the left, we have the blade loads in hover configuration. So it's axisymmetric as you might expect in hover. And then on the right, we have the sound pressure level in decibels on a plane five meters below the vehicle. And we see an interesting contour map where you, an observer would have different levels of noise directly below the vehicle. And this at a maximum value is 80 point, roughly five decibels. Uh, and the thrust constraint here for this optimization problem is one quarter of the vehicle weight, which is roughly 1,400 newtons. So the optimization problem here, what we presented on in the past, is we wanted to minimize the maximum sound pressure level that someone might hear underneath the vehicle. And we did this with respect to the twist and chord distribution, as well as the rotation rate of each one of the rotors. And we subject that to a thrust constraint, as that must support one quarter of the vehicle weight. And what we found is that we were actually able to decrease the sound pressure level to 73 decibels while maintaining thrust, and we significantly decreased the rotational rate of the rotors, which helps with noise. And this is what the span-wise distribution of the blade is in terms of both twist and cord. And I've talked with uh, Dan at length about this. He is doing some similar work using a different set of tools, um, and I'm finding a similar twist distribution to what he has. Uh, the cord is still up for debate, um, but we're finding that these vehicles like to have larger uh, cord length uh, rotors in our experience. To show what the blade loading looks like, uh, it's a little bit small, uh, but you can see that on the tips, the loading is decreased significantly. This you might expect because for noise, you wouldn't want to have very fast moving loading, and for a rotor, the fastest moving part is the tip. So we've decreased the load quite a bit at the tip to try to minimize that noise, as we might expect. And the contour plot looks fairly similar qualitatively, but it's decreased by seven decibels, which is over a factor of two in the amount of noise that a, a person would hear underneath the vehicle. So from this, we found that we can get a seven decibel reduction in noise, which we were happy about, that shows that our framework could actually be used for decreasing full vehicle noise. So I mentioned aerostructural acoustic optimization at the beginning of this presentation. Uh, and I've only mentioned aerodynamic and aeroacoustic for now. So how do we implement this aerostructural side that we've worked on quite a bit in the MDO lab for the last two decades, since 2002? This is what the problem would look like in XDSM form. Um, we have, again, our optimizer wrapped around the entire problem, but we want to integrate this blade element momentum theory model wrapped around perhaps a steady state aerostructural problem to make sure that the vehicle wing won't buckle, for example. So we have the blade element theory block outside of the aerostructural solver that is unsteady, and then we time average those loads and apply them to the structure and also apply them to the CFD to get some source terms in an actuator disk formulation. And from there, we can converge our aerostructural uh, MDA. After that, we can compute our acoustic performance and compute our function of interest and constraints and then repeat again. So we're blending the analysis to have both a time accurate component and a steady state component. This is now being built into MFIS. There's a presentation on that tomorrow, of course, and we'll talk a bit more about how this is being done there. But we're trying to integrate the acoustics portion of this framework into the MFIS framework. Just to give a bit of a teaser of what we have working so far, we have uh, we have a tilt wing concept vehicle that's shown here. This is running with DA foam, DA foam, which is our discrete adjoint for open foam. Um, and we're using an actuator disk formulation. I have a cup plane there to show the velocity or the, the source terms added to the flow. And we're trying to optimize, considering structures, uh, the vehicle performance here to try to minimize uh, the, or maximize the efficiency while constraining the noise and making sure that the vehicle doesn't buckle under load. This was another animation that I would have loved to show, but we've implemented a 
coupling between our aerodynamic code and our structural code that allows these propellers to actually deflect because if you have an aerostructural analysis in the past in our lab, if you were to run that, the propeller, the actuator disc would not move. So we need to couple the movement of that actuator disc with the deflection of the wing because of course that'd be unrealistic for your propeller to not move while the rest of your wing is moving in flight. Uh, so this animation would have shown that deflection to give you an idea of the coupling that we have implemented. So to go over uh, this presentation, we've implemented a set of gradient-based optimization tools within OpenMDAO, uh, and we're working on implementing this OpenMDAO-based framework specifically into MFIS. We're actively working on coupling all of this together for aerostructural optimization as well, so we can apply it to a tilt-wing vehicle, and as I mentioned, we'll talk more about this tomorrow during the MFIS workshop. And then more broadly, as I've brought up a few times between yesterday and today, and I think came up during Professor Martin's talk as well, um, how can we implement this for uh, higher fidelity aerodynamic analysis, something like CFD or even something in between like a vortex particle method, we would need uh, an unsteady coupled adjoint. So that's something that I think we would need to consider in the long run that I don't plan to work on for my PhD work, but I think is an interesting area of future development. So with that, I'll take any questions. Your presentation, thank you. Um, I'm curious, for your aeroacoustic model, mm -hmm. what is the uh, time to uh, calculate on each simulation step? How do you, do you mean each iteration of the optimizer or Co each Correct, step? yeah, each iteration of the optimizer. It really depends on resolution. So in our case, I actually ran a few different, no, let's see if I can go back enough, a few different resolutions. So it depends on the number of panels you have on the blade element model. Uh, I would say that with just an analysis without computing derivatives, it's in, on the order of seconds, so about 10 seconds for a forward pass, depending on the number of rotors you have. So for four rotors, it's pretty quick. When you have to compute the adjoint, it can get somewhat expensive because the acoustic side is fully unsteady, so you have a lot of data to manage. So the adjoint uh, may be 40 to 50 seconds, so you're talking about a few minutes per optimization iteration. The, the, so the question was, was this in parallel or serial? That's a good question. The results for what I'm showing here was done with MP parallelism with four cores. The code is now MPI parallel, so on a cluster, obviously, that is significantly faster. I couldn't tell from your presentation of view if these results include the broadband noise model that you talked about. Good point. They do not. Uh, that is something we have, I would say, half implemented. Okay, uh, we have most of it implemented in the code. We need to differentiate it to have analytical derivatives. Sure. Uh, that's part of the results that I don't want to share yet. Uh, and if I could just, uh, one comment. One thing I've always wanted to try is um, to include the phase difference between uh, different rotors as a design variable because I, I've seen work that shows that there's a noise, there could be a noise reduction associated with that. Let's so I don't know if you have plans for that. Yes. So the... We did a study, while I was working at Airbus AQ, we did a study with two rotors, uh, and we varied the distance between the two of them, both horizontally and vertically, and then we varied the, the phase also. And I'll skip through some of those results, but this was, like you said, the, the case setup where we're oh, changing great. the phase between the rotors. Um, and the, this motivated my work, essentially. This is where I thought optimization could be helpful in the loop, because you can see that you can exploit the phasing of the rotors, or even that slight separation, to significantly change the design space. So this is normalized because that was all Airbus proprietary uh, information, but you can see that there's a significant decrease, uh, I believe, is this the phase? The picture on the right is phase, and you can see that when they're slightly out of phase, you can decrease the noise substantially. Very cool, okay, thank you. What, but what would it take to incorporate that as a design variable in your optimization? What would it take? Yeah. We what could do that already. Say? Okay. Yeah. I will say that having spoken with some people in industry last week in this room in the acoustics technical working group, uh, it's very hard to phase lock rotors. So realistically, it's probably not something that they're looking at right now. Yeah, possibly. <laughs> So you mentioned that 
you didn't use any of the OpenMDAO-based solvers, and you used your own instead. I'm curious what you did and why you chose to go that route as opposed to using what was in OpenMDAO. That's a good question. Uh, blade out momentum theory can be very finicky depending on the implementation you choose. The one we chose can't have negative thrust. So you immediately have a bound on essentially zero on your left side, that if you go negative, your problem will explode. Um, so what we implemented, which is also implemented at BYU with what Dan is using, is called a, a Brent solver. So we essentially bound the left side and find the zone where our solution exists. And we actually do that with a line search. And then from there, you continually chop your, your 1D region to find where your intersect with zero is. Um, I don't believe a Brent solver is an OpenMDAO. Justin, correct me if I'm wrong. It, it's not currently. We've had one in there in the past, and okay. we, it doesn't, serve, doesn't seem to survive continued reboots. <laughs> right. It always so has that, to get added back in. And without, if you do a Newton method and you have, for example, a UAV rotor that has very little thrust that's close to zero, it goes unstable right away. So unfortunately, that's not, we can't use an OpenMDAO solver. Great. Thank you. Any other questions? I have one question. Um, you're considering wing structures? What about the rotor structure itself? I'll deflect that question to Ping, who okay. is working on that. All right. Fair enough. Um, all right. If that's it, um, you can always ask more questions later. So thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks.